Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I always appreciate it. Welcome back to Emerald Gardens, the Solo Planet Zoo project that I started oh about a week ago now. Uh, so, uh, so very grateful, thankful for all the great, great feedback you guys have provided me in the first episode. Really, really, really appreciate it. Really love it. Uh, great comments all around, and really surprised to see so many people that live out in the Pacific Northwest. And thank you specifically for all your suggestions and comments. And I'll tell you, if any of you are ever at a zoo, and it doesn't need to be one of the ones in the Pacific Northwest, but you're going to a zoo in the near future, and you bring your camera along, take some pictures uh, of interesting things. And for me, an interesting thing in a zoo is not necessarily the animals. It's everything else. like. The, the, how a zoo is put together, how it works, how it functions, how it's laid out. Those are the things that I am most interested in. So if you ever go, join Bro Nation. And we have a, a, a visual resource thread, and that's where you could post the stuff. And I will we see it. If it's on Bro Nation, I will see it. If you don't know how to get to Bro Nation, there is a link in the description below. Come hang out with us. Come talk. Come share your zoo stuff. Come, come learn about being... Um, Come learn about how the game works and learn some great things from some really strong designers. I think you'll really love it. So, enough same shameless self-promotion. <laughs> Let's talk about what's on the screen. Uh, we have ourselves a fountain, a central fountain. Um, this is supposed to do two things for me. Number one, it's supposed to get me out of a completely flat map. You'll notice we did some terrain work. And second, uh, I wanted a central, a focal point here to kind of, like a mini hub almost, to, to branch off from here. So we've got this nice little entrance area, and we'll have something off to the side, off to either side. But like, I want this to feel like the main part of the zoo. And this is actually inspired very, very loosely by the reflecting pool at the Houston Zoo. It's this big rectangular pool. It has some... Uh, has some sculptures of animals in it, <clears throat> has lots of greenery all around it. It's actually sunk in uh, a, a below the paths. Uh, yeah, you can go down onto another path, and there's these huge live oaks. One of the trees here in Houston are live oak trees, and they're just these massive trees that have a huge canopy, and it's such a pretty sight. I really love it. Um, so I kind of took the idea of the rectangular pond and then stopped there. I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have some cascading, um, some cas a cascading fountain here? So that's what we try to do, and it's okay. I left it in the time lapse, even though I don't think any of no, no, it's completely different now. There's no actual water in it anymore, but you would never know, and that's all I'm gonna say for now. And you'll see it in real time. You'll see what it became in real time. This was the prototype <laughs> one of the reasons i'm such a slow builder if you're fairly new to the channel and you haven't watched my planet coaster stuff i tend to build things two three four times before i settle on something and most of the time you only see the final rendition of what i've built the one i was happy enough to stick with that's the one that ends up on the on the video but in this case i recorded this and i actually didn't record the remake because i had a lot of back and forth jumping between windows looking at references looking at inspiration asking for feedback and it was too messy to to make a nice time lapse portion so i didn't so we're going to look at it in real time but yeah this is this is only attempt actually this is like attempt 2 or 3 <laughs> the 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 one that <coughs> the one we stuck with is the most recent one and uh, it's much better than this so if you think this looks pretty good by the end just wait cuz i think you're really going to like where it where it goes and i know here we are two episodes in and Still no animals. I think I feel like I gotta cut to that part in Jurassic Park. Now, you you would have dinosaurs in your dinosaur park, right? You would have animals in your Planet Zoo zoo, right? Yes. I was actually just talking with Mike, my bro, uh, just a couple minutes ago because we recorded the next episode of uh, Planet Zoo, and that will be out of, of Season Zoo, and that will be out next week. Um, but we just talked about what our first animal is gonna be, and we decided on that. And I really didn't want to have the same first animal in Planet Zoo, in, in Season Zoo, and in this, because I'm probably going to be doing both of the first, I'll be doing the first exhibit in Season Zoo, as well as my project. So I wanted it to be different, I didn't want to just carbon copy. So 
I know what we're doing in Season Zoo, but I'm not going to tell you. And so I know what I'm not going to do in this zoo, and I'm not going to tell you. But my goal here is Episode 3 to have our first legitimate animal enclosure. Because I know a lot of people are really into the Obviously, why wouldn't you be really into the animals in Planet Zoo? So you can see we've left the... Uh, We've left the, uh, what is it, the pond, and we're working on another building. It's the same style of architecture, this this uh, modern um, Pacific Northwest style of architecture. I actually, it has a particular name, and I had it, and now I can't remember it, and I don't want to Google it because I won't be able to find it quickly. Um, but this is going to be a cafe, like uh, the, main, uh, an e the main eatery when you first walk in the area. And at first, and again, we have the same problem <laughs> we had with the gift shop building. Um, the problem is this style of architecture, you have to have these large glass windows. And when you have large glass windows, there's really no way you can get by without doing an interior. So I, we're going to be doing interiors, I guess, in a lot of these buildings <laughs> in the front of the park. But this is directly uh, inspired, <coughs> again, pretty much <coughs> verbatim from an actual building that exists. It's a, I think, winery um, in in the Pacific Northwest somewhere, and this is pretty close. It's flat on the ground. I raised, I have raised it a little bit, and I have some terrain, subtle terrain shifts, and I think those little terrain shifts make such a huge difference. A lot of people, I see a lot of people on the Facebook group, um, talk on the Planet Zoo Facebook group, talking about how their stuff looks very boring and very square and very plain and yada, yada, yada. One of the things that, I don't take most enough advantage of that I'm trying to fix in this project are terrain shifts. Little subtle, little tiny shifts of, terrain, of change in terrain can make such a big difference aesthetically and really bump up the realism quite a bit. So uh, that is really something I'm trying to work on, which is why setting this project in the Pacific Northwest, I really don't have much of a choice. Like uh, from my experience, I've been to Portland and uh, at least the part of Portland I was in is so incredibly hilly. Uh, I mean, so incredibly just steep. It is beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. But I, t to be able to capture that, you can't do that with a flat map. So, yeah, if you're looking for ways to uh, make things more interesting, change your terrain up. Um, so here we're going to work a little bit on an actual interior to this. Just a, a little, nothing fancy. I don't want you to think that I am some um, interior guru, because I am clearly not. I mean, look at what I'm building. But I also don't want it to look, I don't want it to be an empty shell. So we do a couple little tricks here that I learned from Planet Coaster when it comes to building restaurants. Uh, specifically, we're going to make a condiment cart. <laughs> it gets so stupid. <laughs> Here, look at this pretty cool piece of architecture. Now listen to me be excited about the condiment cart I built. But that's the stuff that I am really into. Making those little details that solidify this as a zoo as opposed to just a collection of buildings. Like, if this is a quick service restaurant, which it is, like, it needs a condiment cart and it needs trash cans where you're going to throw your stuff away. Like, it, it needs that. And you can't have these wooden walls where they are going to be cooking the food, which is why we jump to these non-gridded plaster walls. I almost tried to make them checkerboard, but that would have clashed so significantly and so spectacularly with the architectural style. So we just went with this kind of minty green and gave it a quick little border to kind of make the whole thing feel a little more cohesive. You'll notice that that border goes onto the, uh, the uh, log walls as well. I had to stick it out a little bit there. It wasn't quite symmetrical, which I was actually okay with. Uh, these benches that actually kind of look like tables, they were such a perfect fit. And then for whatever reason, I had a heck of a time putting benches out here. Like the picnic benches on the raised patio, I, I couldn't get them to work. I am really, was really bummed about that, so there's not nearly as many as I want. But here we are, we're going to go ahead and build ourselves a condiment cart. And one of the things I'm doing here that I didn't do in my Planet uh, Coaster ones is actually make it functioning. Like, theoretically, people should come over here and throw their trash away, <laughs> which I think is super cool. And I fiddled way too long for this, trying to make it a perfectly round hole. It's like, well, that's stupid. Let's just, let's cover it up here. And then we'll just use black art shapes there to make it look like it's... And it's actually a trash can in there, which I'm actually really proud with. Like, I don't know why I never did that before, but... And then up here we actually have some condiments, 
We're gonna put some ketchup and mustard and relish because this is a hot dog restaurant, or that's at least what we're selling. We're selling hot dogs and soda, I think. So there's our ketchup, there's our mustard, and there's our relish. And it's a bright green relish because I'm from Chicago. And that's what everyone puts on their hot dogs, so no hate in the comments, please. <laughs> but trying to find a little piece to use as nozzles, I found this little bracket that works really, really well. Spam in some trash cans, and then the last little bit of the time lapse is going to be some planting. I wanted this this planting in front or in between the main path and the restaurant, as it comes up here. Once I get stuck with these silly benches, uh, I wanted it to feel like um, a little more intentional. We're also gonna be covering up some of these empty empty holes here uh, with some rock work. But there you go. I, I wanted I'm taking some tips from Mike from his most from his Planet Botanic and his actually his build video for the Lady Designers Zoo. Uh, he did some cool tricks to make some more uh, some more believable moss and uh, thought out was super cool. But I wanted this whole area to feel these planters to feel a little more um, intentional like they were actually planted as opposed to just let free to return to wild and uh, the one thing I am noticing from all the pictures of my source material is how overgrown the zoo is the Oregon Zoo and then the zoo in Seattle which actually isn't called the Seattle Zoo it's called the Woodland Zoo or something uh, but both of those are especially the the, the uh, Oregon Zoo is very 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 wooded and very overgrown. So I don't know how strict we're gonna stick with that, but I thought here that this would be a good way to do it. And then I thought about throwing some rocks and logs in, kind of to to re-solidify the setting here. Like we've got this really clean architectural style, but then I wanted these more rustic materials around it in a rustic way to kind of drive home the fact that, no, no, this is a zoo, and. We're in a pretty rugged area here, so I really am happy with how all this turned out. And so with all that, why don't we go ahead and jump into real time and you can get a better look at it. So I'll see you on the other side of this cut. So here we are at the entrance of the park and uh, some comments on the sign. The, uh, the kind of limey green, I like the lime green, but I don't like the font, um, so. I'm going to give that another pass. At some point, I will fix that. Uh, I just wish we had more than this one font. And the hard part is making small enough fonts that don't need to be nested into rocks or walls. There's some really, there's a really nice font out there right now. And uh, it just needs to be nested into a wall to look right. And so getting freeform fonts like this is a, is a tricky proposition. So I'm going to give it a try uh, and we'll see what happens. So I might just go the... Uh, the Oregon Zoo route and just make Z-O-O. -O. <laughs> Might do that. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, uh, you can see right away that things are a little different. So let's take a look at what we got. So as we come in here, we have this main eatery, which needs some signage, clearly, and needs some names. And the hard part with using realistic uh, examples of architecture is I'm not quite sure what to uh where to put signs like in the window maybe i don't i don't really know so we'll, we'll see but anyway here's a look at it in 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 a real time and you can see there's an interior there and we've got the slightly taller uh patio area so let's go ahead and let's go actually this way because i always think the main entrance is right here even though it's kind of small so we're gonna come up here into our little area here and I actually need to change the path there I had that let's go ahead and change that right now nope not that one oh, that one there we go so now we have matching paths throughout I wanted to put a menu in over here and I ended up deleting it um, and it was just going to be some art shapes with some lines to make it look like writing and I might still do that I just wasn't happy with anything I was coming up with, so I, I got rid of it. But through these little zebra, I like a little zebra thing here. I think it looks pretty cool. And here's that condiment cart. It's so simple, but I think it adds so much. Like it, it speaks loudly for being so small and being so simple. It's very clear what it is, and it gives this entire space now a reference, a reason for existing. It's very clear this is some sort of restaurant now. 
even if you didn't see what they were selling. And just, I love the wood beams here. And this is all straight out of the, uh, the reference image. So hopefully you are as happy with how this building came out as I did. I do need to add some more plants here though. That's a little bare for my, for my liking. But you can see we've got some wildflowers here. Uh, that seems to make sense to me. They do get some sunlight as the sun passes through. So that makes a little bit of sense for me. And uh, I figured a few pops of color here and there would make uh, a lot of sense. Didn't touch anything over there on this episode. But now, I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but I hear running water. Oh, and I see some. Let's turn around. And the main thing for this episode is now here. Take a look at this. Let's zoom up. This is my reflecting pond. And it doesn't really reflect. It's my cascading pond. We'll call it that. And it's much narrower than it was in the time lapse. And it's got a gravel bottom. And it doesn't actually have any water in it at all. These are all particle effects. These are all amazing particle effects that are in the default game. We're using some splashes to create the refractions to get the pools. We're using some of the rapids to get the water to look like it's moving. We are using some waterfall pieces sunken in way down there. And what I'm doing is I'm using the gravel path here to actually work as a gravel bed. And oh my gosh, if that doesn't tip it over the edge. And then what I ended up doing is taking a whole bunch of ferns and fern looking plants and mosses and all that stuff and just go into town in here because I figured that's what there would be. I could probably add more. Now that I've been sitting on it without looking at it for a day, um, I could add even, even, even more. And we have here at the top a couple of stags I really like the way that looks from the bottom here. You can see, like you could totally see up there and see the stags. And I think that's such a neat idea. And I'm thinking our first exhibit, I might put a path in here and have it behind these trees. And then we'll have it, the zoo will go out this way. Cause we've got this area here. This could be a huge exhibit of some kind uh, up here. And we've got, this area here we can wrap around this pond so basically the the zoo is going to be the edge of the pond to here and all this area is going to be the zoo so i'm not quite sure where we're headed with it yet but i think i have some ideas for our first animal exhibit but i wanted you to take a look at what we have currently like i am just in love with this angle with this view I'm really, really happy with it. And hopefully you are as excited as I am with how this turned out. I think it's pretty good. I think I might want to lower the um, hedges a bit. Let's see if I can actually do that without causing too much uh, distress. Probably not. So I did put the interface back on and I know it's like, what, you're actually building? I am going to actually build. No, I'm not. This is going to take way too much effort that I don't really want to put forward right now. Because no matter what I do, yeah, I'm going to end up grabbing some of the... So what I, uh, yeah, I'm just going to end up grabbing... Let me do this real fast, and we'll see what we think. I'll probably just cut this part out and show you. Okay, so I dropped it down, <laughs> and now I like it even more. <laughs> Look at that. What an amazing difference just that little change makes. Now it's a lot, it just feels more open, feels more connected to the surroundings. It doesn't feel nearly as blocked off, and yet I still feel like no one, oh, that one's too tall. I, I feel like no one's going to jump in there. No one's going to be, like it's, okay, it's very clear. Don't go in there. So, ah, I'm glad I did that. So there you go, let's take a look from the top towards the uh, restaurant. 
And I think that's where we're going to call. We're going to call it a day right here. So I hope you've enjoyed the second episode and be ready for an actual animal exhibit in the next episode. Go figure, right? In a zoo game, having animals. Ah. If you liked what you saw, do hit, the, uh, do hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to like and leave some feedback below. Uh, things you'd love to see, things I can keep in mind for this type of zoo. And with that being said, have yourself a great day, great night, great whatever, and I will see all of you for the next episode of Planet Zoo. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.